our Masters preview. And here is an around the horn movement that John Rahm start two under for this shot in his practice round. And that's amazing. He should get credit for that. Whether Shambo's science experiment can solve Augusta. And if you were redrafting quarterbacks, would you still go burrow to a Herbert? Let's go. Everybody loves a good redraft. Is it crazy to bring up the idea of taking a quarterback with the third pick or the second yes. pick if you may have it? Yes. You ask me if it's crazy to bring the idea up, and I'm answering you, yes. <laughs> We're playing <laughs> games here, guys, but it, it's not the thing to be talking about at all. You know, Dak is our it quarterback. It is the thing we're talking about right now. I mean, it comes around the horn to you. How do you hear Jerry Jones there? I don't hear anything. Those were, you can just take that quote and throw it in the trash because it doesn't mean anything. Okay. <laughs> um, right now, Dallas is slated to pick third, and we can talk about what that means because it has massive ramifications for the future of the franchise if they're picking near the top of the draft. I believe, personally, if they're picking third, they should stick with Dak, uh, potentially trade down if another team wants to trade up and take a quarterback there because after Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, you're just praying that whatever quarterback you take in the draft even comes close to Dak Prescott. It's too risky. It's a franchise that has had a lot of difficulty finding quarterbacks, by the way. They lucked into Dak Prescott. Now, if they pick first or second, that's when it gets a little bit more interesting, right? Because those quarterbacks are very good. You'd have them on a rookie deal. That's very alluring. My feeling is that if the Cowboys can extend Dak on a reasonable deal and get a massive haul of picks, that's something they should consider instead of taking Fields or Lawrence. But after first or second, they're sticking with Dak. Mr. Woody Page, how did you hear Jerry Jones there? Mina must not have been around when they made that deal involving Herschel Walker. That's not happening again in the, in the Cowboys franchise history. But if they did get the first or second pick, I think that they should consider that possibility of moving on because they're going to have to, with Dak coming back from a horrific injury and a guy that's going to get paid just you know $250 million like Patrick Mahomes, uh, you're going to have to end up paying him, that I think that the, it's a possibility that if you could get Fields or if you get Lawrence, you'd make the move. I mean, you got to remember in Jerry Jones' history, though, he wanted to draft Paxton Lynch. That's what he wanted, and he ended up with Dak Prescott, who just <laughs> fell into his lap. So I don't think it's so crazy that the question should be asked. Israel Gutierrez, how did you hear Jerry Jones there? I think you might have shorted Patrick Mahomes by about $150 million there. Um, look, <laughs> I more. heard a guy, and I read the great column from uh, Jean Jacques Taylor in the Dallas Morning News. I, I read a column, from, uh, I, I, excuse me. Yeah. I, I thought Jerry Jones seemed delusional. I thought he seemed like the leader of a stable franchise that's ready to win a Super Bowl. They are none of those things. They are a franchise that seems to have a lot of holes to fill. And when you're in that situation, what's your, your options being, hey, let me pay $40 million for this quarterback that we have and see if we can fill the, the holes around him or start over with a cheaper quarterback and see what happens. I think they are closer to that, despite the fact they're in this terrible division and despite the fact they were good not too long ago. But you're in a situation where you don't know if Dak Prescott can be the same person next season. And if they do have the one or two or even the third pick, if Justin Fields falls for them, what falls to that number? What are they calling Justin Fields? A more athletic Dak Prescott. So go get that guy. He's cheaper, more athletic, younger, and then sort of rebuild from there. I don't think it's crazy at all. Okay. And Frank Isola, how about you? You know, the Green Bay Packers drafted a quarterback uh, just recently, and, they, and their quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, isn't recovering from a compound fracture. So how can you be the Cowboys, and it's something that you don't consider? If, if I'm Jerry Jones, and you ask me that question today, I'm not going to say, of course we're looking for a quarterback. My poor guy, Dak Prescott, is recovering. I'm not going to make him feel even worse. But you, you have to be doing the smart thing here. If there's somebody in the draft that doesn't necessarily have to be in the first round, somebody that you think could lead your franchise, you have to do it. I like Dak Prescott. I think you could win big with him. But remember, he's 1-2 and two in the playoffs. And last year against Philadelphia, essentially a play-in game, he didn't play well. And Mina Kimes, something you'd like to add? Well, 
to go to the Packers example, there's a very big difference between picking first, second, or third yes. and picking yes. at the end of the draft. Frank, I know yeah. you're, you're saying if they're picking later, maybe that's when they would take a quarterback, but we're talking about that's picking right. at the top. That would be, frankly, bananas. If they play. I, honestly, I don't like it that the Packers did it. I don't think it's helping them, frankly. But we've seen frankly, bananas uh, but get it doesn't make sense for Dallas. Uh, pardon pardon the, taking that out a little bit further. Recently, Arizona drafted a quarterback in the first round one year. The next year, they've come back, drafted a quarterback in the first round, and now they're at least it's slotted higher. for the playoffs. I mean, it, it didn't bottom the team out either. I mean, things, crazy things could happen, especially this year more than any other. We're going to move on. News of the day from Carolina. Christian McCaffrey now. A shoulder injury, so he's not expected to play Sunday. Schefter reported he'll be week to week going forward, is getting a second opinion. He's already missed six games with an ankle injury, signed for the biggest contract in running back history in April. Frank, you think the Panthers, well, maybe they don't regret the signing, but regret his usage rate, or you think they have no regrets? Yeah. That, that's a good point. They use him so often, especially catching the ball. Whenever I hear that a running back is holding out, it's the one position in sports where I say, yeah, you know what, I would do that too because your career is so short. And I think for these teams, when you invest in running backs, I mean, who's winning the Super Bowl last year? Kansas City. They won because of their quarterback. All the years that New England won, who was really their running back? It's almost a luxury item for a lot of teams. I don't think you have to break the bank and sign a big-time running back. Where does it really get you? Israel Gutierrez? I don't think that they're worried about it too much. If you look at his first three years, not a bunch of injuries, right? If this is the year where he happens to have a couple and sits out, whatever, eight, nine games, yep. and he recovers next year, fine. I don't think they'd regret it one, one, one bit because he is the primary reason why they're going to win games. Woody Page? Yeah, Israel, absolutely correct. I've known him since he was a kid, and I'm telling you what, he's not a luxury item, Frank. He plays wide receiver and running back. He's a returner. He can play quarterback. He plays out of shotgun. Great. What not in the world now. do you want from a guy? He's very versatile. Well, yeah, he got hurt. Play. It's happened. You've gotten hurt at home in your closet. I think that it's a possibility <laughs> that this guy works out harder than anybody else during the offseason climbing mountains here in Colorado. It, it's a rarity. It's not going to happen every year. He's going to be a big asset for them for a long time. Nina Kimes, you seem a little befuddled by Woody's answer, but just uh, <laughs> on, on McCaffrey. If we could bring it back away from the mountains and more to McCaffrey on the football yeah. field. <laughs> yeah. Um, Move the mountain. Gosh, I feel like I'm always this person, but here's the truth. They've averaged more yards per play when he's not on the field. If someone this was going to bring that Their up. Their expected points added per play is basically identical. I'm not saying he doesn't make the team better, but he doesn't make them better enough to have justified the long term deal, which I didn't like at the better. time. Um, they're perfectly fine on offense without him, and in fact, have actually outperformed. Mm -hmm. I want to go back and check the tape on Frank Isola when Saquon Barkley got uh, got drafted and, and, and headed towards his big deal. Whether, whether you I thought, said okay, that. I, just, I said I wanted to check the tape. Oh, absolutely. I don't need to check I, the tape. I, You're telling he's me. He's a that. terrific player, but these guys take such huge hits today. They don't last that long, unfortunately. Where's Barkley right now? Out for the season. We're going to move on. One more story from the NFL. Offensive Rookie of the Year odds have come in. Just, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, and look who's third right now. Tua Tungabailoa, all, all QBs at the top here. The first round rookie quarterbacks this year are 5, 11, and 1. I am including Jordan Love in that stat. Israel, if you were redrafting, who would you take first? I'm going to make this easy. I'm going to say Tua. Why? Because if he wasn't hurt his last year at college, he would have been the number one pick. And based on some of the things Maybe. you're seeing early on, he looks like he could still have that athleticism. His accuracy is there. And, you know, he's more mobile than, I mean, he's not Kyler Murray out there, but he's close. And I think that combination is a great package. I'd take Tua. Nina Kimes? There is a statistic I love called completion percentage over expectation. Next Gen Stat looks at what a quarterback should be achieving and how much he's overachieving. Number one is Russell Wilson. Number two is Joe Burrow right now. He's my guy. They're all awesome. They look incredible, but Burrow's been so consistently good. Woody Page? As a lifetime underachiever, Mina, I think I can deal with this better <laughs> than you can. And I, you know, dare I say, Justin Herbert, you're looking at a guy okay. at the end of the year. Many, you want to cite uh, statistics? He didn't play the first game. He's going to end up with 4,000 yards and almost 40 touchdowns. You don't think that's the most impressive rookie among those three? I think he's going to have the biggest upside of all three of them, and I would have taken him number one, given the chance. We, I think we downgraded him because of the last year he had at Oregon, but this guy's proving that he is going to be a great quarterback. Reminds me of Peyton Manning somewhere. All right, so there we go. We've, we've got three different <laughs> drafts right now. 
Oh, Frank Isola, I guess you're going to tip this one way or the other. If you were redrafting the quarterback, I'm going to go with right Madame. Yep. I'm going to go with, uh, with Madame Football as well. I'm going Joe Burrow still. Think about it, Tony. My guy. Tua walked into a good situation. Herbert walked into a pretty good situation. They just can't hold, you know, they blow games oh, really? in the final seconds. Joe Burrow walked into a losing team. If Tua walked into that team, Justin Herbert, I think they would be struggling. He's still the best player. He won in college. He'll win in the NFL. What do you want? You want back at Frank because he said the Chargers was a pretty good situation. Yeah, I Frank, he said <laughs> Herbert walked into a situation where they lose every game by three, four, or five points. They've had six in a well, row. In the games. They lost at the end. They should That's win not those his fault. That's the defense. It's no good. Israel, last word for you. No, I don't really have a last word on this uh, topic. I just feel really bad. It really hurts my heart when I'm making an NFL uh, analysis, yeah. and I see Mina laughing because I know she's just going to I know, but, but Mina, Mina, Mina <laughs> you recognize you were celebrating Frank <laughs> agreeing with you. you. You sure you want to agree yes. with, on something with Frank? Are you absolutely That's the sure about that? that the Jets, the Giants. Actually, now that yeah. I'm thinking about this, let's make this a little bit closer. All right. <laughs> Taking a break here. Coming up in Buy and Sell, we're going to talk about Manager of the Year. Kevin Cash is taking the award in the American League. We'll see how that sits with you after the World Series. But in the National League, did anybody see who won it? Don Mattingly, which yeah. makes him the yeah. second member yeah. of the Springfield Nine to win it. Mike Sosha won it back in 02 and 09. Yes. Very good. A tradition just like every other. Picking the Masters. Look at the odds here. And Woody, I'm looking at you. This is our first ever November at Augusta. Do you think the course play is different? Yes, having played there in October uh, before the Christmas season, I can tell you that it plays a lot tougher this time of year because it's going to play slower and the greens are going to be slower. And DeChambeau is not going to have a chance of winning because he thinks he's going to make the course smaller. He is not that great a putter, not, doesn't have a great short game. That's going to make a difference. All right. He can't win. So you answered every question. That is a full preview from Woody Page. Bryson DeChambeau, Dustin Johnson, co-favorites. Then John Rahm surging after that practice shot and Rory McIlroy. Mina, DeChambeau's teasing us with a 48-inch driver and the plan to solve Augusta with science. Are you buying that? <laughs> Uh, not really. I mean, as a fan of cutting quarters in general and a fan of pretty much everything <laughs> that Bryson DeChambeau is doing because it's interesting and weird, I'm rooting for him. But I think Woody has a good point about the course, in particular the greens and how they roll differently, and I okay. think that's and going Woody gets to the challenge point. him this time around. Oh, Woody gets the well, point. Well, in, in two it's segments fair. now, you've agreed with Isola and Woody Page. I'm really questioning you right Very now. Weird. Israel Gutierrez? <laughs> I mean, people were wondering what he could do at the U.S. Open, and he, look, he won that with, by six strokes. I think it's just ridiculously intriguing. The guy is trying to do things that nobody else does. If he masters this, no pun intended, actually, if he masters this, he's going to be the next bi the, the big thing in golf, and it's going to be amazing to watch all the time. So I'm cheering for it. Will it happen here? I don't know, but I want to see him keep at this for every single major. Right, guys. Solo? Yeah, if you remove Tiger Woods from the equation, he really is the big name, the big story going into this. But Tony, three previous appearances, his highest finish was 21st, and then he was an amateur at that point. Yeah. Yes, he hits the ball long, but with the rain as Tony, as uh, as Woody talked about, and he's not a great putter. I don't think the course is built for him. <laughs> Woody, the only human who can look at the weather forecast, Woody Page. Why is everybody giving Woody points today? You you want him to get to? He wants to be the, the weather. 35 man. points, so he doesn't have a recap. All right, one sentence or less, who are you picking and why, Woody Page? <laughs> Roy McIlroy has changed his grip oh, yeah. and yeah. release point. In the air, yeah. So you got Rory McIlroy because, because he's going to keep it on the course? Israel Gutierrez, how about you? DeChambeau figures it out. Mm -hmm. I've got Frank? him winning it. Oh. Dustin Johnson finished tied for second last mm -hmm. year. Okay. He'll break through and he'll Mina be I'm rolling with Rom because he's been great since the restart. And did you yes, see that uh, yeah. one? Thank I you mean, for clearly up. magic is on his side. Can we give him like a second green jacket just for doing that? that that's the most amazing so shot I've cool. ever seen. We'll move on. That's NBA so free cool. agency is nine days away. Is there even enough time for these hardened Westbrook and Paul rumors to maximize mayhem? Chris Paul and the Phoenix Suns reportedly having interest in him. James Harden and Russell Westbrook and reportedly not sure about the future direction of Houston. Frank, which reporter is likely to make the bigger impact on the NBA this season? 
Rockets. Well, it definitely could be the Rockets if they decide to break up that team. But I will say this about Chris Paul going to Phoenix. He can do for the Suns what he did for Oklahoma City. You take a young team, you provide leadership, toughness, and they can get into the playoffs. That would be a great move with DeAndre Ayton and Devin Booker. But you like that. That makes sense to you. How about you, Amina Khans? I also like it. Breaking up the Rockets is the bigger story. But Paul going to Phoenix turns them into a contender. I think both sides saw what happened in the bubble, and they liked it. Devin Booker's a superstar. He brings the veteran experience. That's a really good team. Woody Page? I think it's going to be about Westbrook, and I think he's going to end up with Frank in New York. They're going to subscribe together. That is a very Nick move. I will (laughs) quote J.A. Adondi that if you want to be the man, and he does, you need to be in a place where you can be the man. And that's not in Houston. Israel Gutierrez? I think James Harden deserves some continuity with teammates. I mean, we know he gets along with Russell Westbrook and they're tight, and I think that's sort of why they're voicing this, because it's just like, why break us apart? We like each other. Maybe put the pieces around us a little bit differently with a different coach and make that work, but stop with the constant turnover. I can't keep doing it. Yeah, where's the smoke that's coming from really. here, Frank? Uh, I mean, we first report was that Harden and Westbrook helped choose Steven Silas as head coach just last week. Yeah, and, and I really think what they're doing, they're doing a huge disservice to Steven Silas. You finally get this job, and now you have all this stuff out there. To me, it comes across like one of them or probably both of them doesn't want to be there. Maybe they think it's a rebuild, but i got to be honest with you. If I'm Houston, the way the Western Conference is, it's time to start all over again. Trade them now. Westbrook's going to be 32 tomorrow. Harden's 31 right now. Buy or sell three baseball managers of the year. Don Mattingly, after the job he did with the Marlins, I brought that up before. No one even reacted to Homer at the bat, one of the greatest Simpsons episodes. You had no idea what I'm talking about. Mutes for all you people. Also, Kevin Cash for Tampa. How that looks, Cash winning after the World Series may or may not have come down to him pulling Blake Snell in game six. Buy or sell, Israel. <laughs> Well, I'm going to buy it. I know it looks bad because of the Snell pull in the World Series, but it just confirms it was a 60-game sample size. He made all the right decisions, or close to all the right decisions in that span. One game isn't going to change that. Solo. That's when you. That's why you like it when the managers, every once in a while, trust their instincts. Blake Snell should have stayed in that game, but guess what? It's a regular season award. Have at it. Times. It's just another piece of evidence, and this is true for the NBA as well, that they need to hand out this award earlier so we don't have these discussions. It's a regular season <laughs> award handed out after the regular season. Woody Page. Smell, smell, sell. It's what you've done for us lately, and what we will remember is what he did to lose the World Series. All right, Woody Page, getting to 35 points in the show. Yes. Wow. Woody right. is Isola. Taking a back seat for a Mina Kimes, Woody Page showdown. Old school and new school in two minutes. Ooh, ooh. I'm old school. school. What is our school? Yeah, Woody. Tonight's Cy uh, Young Awards, Shane Bieber might be unanimous in the American League. The NL has a race, though. It's between you, Darvish, Jacob DeGrom, Trevor Bauer. Mina, who you got? DeGrom has the best hair, Darvish has the best Twitter presence, but Bauer deserves the Cy Young. Statistically, he is the winner. Yeah, he's got the predominant personality. It was the preeminent pitcher this year, but I'm going with DeGrom. I mean, to have the con- continuity he's had over the last three years, he deserves it again. Uh, it is a one-year award. Point me to Kimes. We'll move on. Showdown two. Midweek film sessions around the league. None will be more fun than Indy. Phillip Rivers, the armadillo. Quick turnaround for the Colts. Titans tomorrow night. Who's the better AFC South team? Woody Page. I'm going with Tennessee. They've proven it going back to last year. And Indianapolis has disappointed me, particularly last weekend with that picture you showed of, of Rivers lying on the ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guys. I'm That's going them. with Indianapolis. They're the more balanced team. They've got one of the best defenses in the league. And Phil Rivers plays well when he's not pressured. The Titans haven't been able to get a pass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's under pressure. All well, the time. we'll see how Mina plays with pressure. It's one to one going into the showdown three. Just when it looked like it couldn't get worse for the Jets. Roll tape. Oh boy. Bill Belichick said on radio yesterday that leaving the Jets was one of the greatest moments of his career. Mina, fair or foul insult? Oh, man, I forgot about those bangs, so that was foul. But uh, I think it's fair because it's accurate. 
It's accurate. It was the Woody? best decision of his career. You can't deny it. Well, it's fair because we're seeing a new side of Bill Belichick, which may indicate he's on the way out because he picked on his team recently. Now he's all over the Jets. <laughs> I like Bill. Right. He's saying hello as he's saying goodbye. And I like Woody Page today. 30 seconds of FaceTime, Mr. Dro. <laughs> We certainly want to salute the military today on Veterans Day, and I want to hold up a telephone number, and everybody look at this, because if you're having mental health problems, particularly in the military, in 2019, 25.9 out of 100,000 military have committed suicide. They have done more than sacrifice in the military. They continue to sacrifice after they get out. And it's a, it's a program that both Tony and I are very strongly about. Let's please help the military, not only for their sacrifice, but for their mental health problems. Please call this number. Thank you so much for that, Woody Page, acknowledging our veterans and our veterans in crisis. I'd like to acknowledge Pete Kimes, Mina's father, of the Air Force. And we also have family members like Uncle John, Frank Sunkel, who sacrificed for this country. Okay. Thank you all veterans. We're off tomorrow and Friday. See you Monday.